go get it or someone went for you? Good evening. Buenas noches. Tonight we have a full school board meeting, but first let's have one of our DSAC students who is also a, a student body president of JQ Middle School, Nirvana Moreno, please lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance. You may now be seated. Thank you, President Montes. Thank you. <laughs> Do we have a report out of closed session? Yes. Um, the the Board of Education um, um, accepted the administrative appointment of uh, Christina Hernandez as Assistant Principal Garcia Elementary School effective date to be determined. The roll call board was 5-0. In closed session, the board took actions to issue notice, notice to employee number 1875235 that he or she shall not be reemployed for the 2015-2016 school year. The roll call board was 5-0. Next, in closed session, the board took action to issue notices to uh, two employee, and I will read um, the board uh, a separate um, employee ID number. First employee ID number 1553235. Five, the roll call board was 3-2, and I'm going to uh, read the, the, the um, which yes or no. Uh, President Montes was um, no. Uh, Mrs. O'Calley, Nancy D. O'Calley, Vice President, yes. Dina Walker, Clark, no. Joseph Ayala, member, yes. Joseph W. Martinez, member, yes. Next, employee ID number 1381025. Uh, the roll call board was 5-0. These two employees, uh, they may be released from the administrative positions and reassigned to another certificated administrative positions, classroom teaching position, or other non-management certificate position for the 2015-2016 school year, or that their work year and or or salary may be reduced for the 2015-2016 school year. Thank you. Thank you, Interim Superintendent, Mr. Mohammed Islam. Uh, next, um, we need to adjourn uh, closed session. Do we have a motion to adjourn closed session? So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion uh, closed session closed. <laughs> uh, okay, we'll be um, we'll be starting. Uh, a regular open session now and I just would like to uh, introduce our student board <coughs> member um, here tonight uh, Ms. Angulo um, we have our uh, school board member Mr. Joseph Martine Martinez present we have uh, school board member Mr. Joe Ayala present nope. we have uh, to my left we have uh, school board uh, clerk uh, Ms. Walker uh, present we and Ms. Vice President 
<laughs> Nancy G. O'Kelly, and I am your president, uh, Edgar Montes. So with that, we'll go ahead and begin. Um, do we have a motion to adopt the agenda for tonight? So moved. Second. Uh, do we have any discussion? Or any items that uh, anyone would like to uh, pull? Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 We'll go ahead and continue to um, agenda item B, presentations. Uh, we'll start with um, Ms. Angulo, take it away. Good evening, everyone. Today, our first presenter is Celestino Luis from Cold Middle School. Good evening, Honorable Board of Education, Interim Superintendent Mr. Islam, and viewing audience. My name is Tino, and I'm the Vice President of Cold Middle School's ASB. I'm also the one and only captain of Cold Middle School's JROTC, and I have come here to tell you all the amazing things that is happening at the Mighty Home of the Cougars. First, Cold Middle School just held our second quarter award ceremony, and it was great. We had over 10 students with a 4.0 GPA. That's straight yeah. A's. Oh. Also, we had even more on principal's honor roll and on regular honor roll. So it's a spirit of doing one more thing, one more time. Also, our girls and boys basketball team went to the playoffs today, and they won, and now we're, there, we're headed for championships. Good job, Cougars. Oh, and Cole will be hosting soon a, step, a, st a STEM Saturday soon. All students from Cole and even the elementary schools can come on down and see how the Cougars rock in STEM and science. Also, one final thing. I'd like to give credit to my partner in crime. <laughs> just kidding. Um, we're just partners. She couldn't come tonight, but she's the president of Cole Middle School's ASB. Her name is Jenna Patton, and me and her have been working together to plan a field trip for 45 eighth graders to, go to attend to Riley's Farm to learn about the Civil War. So, so I also want to give a ba big thanks to our principal, Carolyn Eide, and Cindy Lepore for helping me and Jenna make this field trip idea become a reality. So we're going to schedule this field trip for the towards the end of April, beginning of May, sometime between there, and 45 eighth graders will come and learn more about the Civil War. Well, awesome. thanks for thanks, Honorable Board of Education, Intern Superintendent Mr. Islam, and viewed audience. Until we meet again, this is Tino signing off. Good night, Rialto. <laughs> Our next presenter is Nirvana Moreno from JHU Middle School. Good evening, Honorable Board of Education, Interim Superintendent Mr. Islam, and viewing audience. My name is Nirvana Moreno, the ASB president at JHU Middle School. Our royalty dance is the last dance of the year, and many eighth graders are looking forward to being crowned king or queen on April 22nd. The dance will be from 3 to 5 p.m. Our open house was a great success. Plenty of parents came to see how well their kids were doing. Many clubs sold food and drinks to fundraise for their activities. ASB went down to Garcia Elementary this past Friday to reach a different classes in honor of Dr. Seuss's birthday. Jiggy, our school mascot, was ambushed by little first graders that were excited to finally meet him. They will be waiting again next year for a return. We will be having our sports day to honor opening day for the amazing sport of baseball. We would like to invite you all to come and show off your team spirit. We will be waiting to see which of you like the Dodgers or the Angels. JHU is very proud to announce that, drum roll please, <laughs> once again, one of our own will soon become a TV star. Our teacher, Kita Kashiwagi, <coughs> is going to be competing on the hit TV show, American Ninja Warrior. We invite everyone to come out and support our science ninja on Friday night and possibly Saturday morning at Venice Beach. Thank you and good night. <coughs> Our next speaker is Maya Smith from Frisbee Middle School. Good evening, parent, parents and guardians, members of the board, interim superintendent, Mr. Islam, community members. My name is Maya Smith, and this is the ASB report of the month of February and March for Frisbee Middle School. This month was a very busy month in us planning our third annual Career and College Day. We at Frisbee make this a school-wide event with over 60 professionals on campus to speak and lecture about <laughs> careers that we can start looking into. Another component we've added into our career day is a presentation from our AVID <coughs> students. AVID students researched careers in colleges and presented them as a college walkthrough. The Career and College Day has been a great success the past three years. Every year we learn what works for us and hope next year's event is even bigger. 
We are also in the process of getting ready for our eighth grade activities. We are excited about preparing for our annual eighth grade dance. We can't reveal any more information because it's top secret. <laughs> <laughs> but it's going to be an amazing event. That's all for today. Thank you for listening. Our final speaker is Ana Elisa Valenzuela from Rialto Middle School. Good evening, Honorable Board of Education, Superintendent Mr. Islam, and our viewing audience. My name is Annalisa Valenzuela, and I am proud to represent Rialto Middle School as the ASP president. It is a pleasure to be here tonight and share all the events of our school. Us Tigers have been very busy last month with many projects. Last month, we hosted the District Science Fair, and although we did not take home the trophy, we are proud of Alexander Hirkison, who won the Sweepstakes Award. On February 25th, we held our third annual Take Your Parent to School Day. On this day, we invited our parents to walk a mile in our shoes. Okay, so it wasn't a mile, but they did spend the day shadowing us in our classes. Over 250 parents were caught doing math, taking <coughs> notes, and quizzes. We had a BBQ chicken lunch expertly, expertly pre prepared by Nutrition Services and some lunchtime dancing as we brought our, our resident ASB DJ. It was a great day. Last week on March 5th, we had our ASB RMS open house night. This time, parents got to be parents. We opened our campus and classrooms to everyone in the family to check out our school. The in and out bus came and set up their South Rialto location, and the parents fed us good. 450 burgers later, we celebrated another successful family night as Tigers. On Read Across America night, the RMS Builders Club took to the streets and walked over to our neighbors at Warner Elementary. Dressed as the cat in the hat in things one and two, they read in small groups to all 180 first graders. Thanks to the Rialto Education Association grant, they were able to purchase enough books to give every student in their group a book to take home. The I Am Going to College project found 200 of our student sixth graders on Redlands University campus last Friday with the remaining sixth graders going this week to check out what colleges are really like. Our seventh graders and eighth graders will be traveling to USC and UCLA next month to open their eyes and minds to what college choices they have. I thank you for allowing me this time to share our campus events with you. Have a great spring break, relax and enjoy time with friends and family because when we return, it will be fourth semester and testing season. This would conclude the middle school DSAC presentation. Let's give one more round of applause to all the uh, student DSAC. Thank you, Ms. Angulo. Next, we'll go on to public comments, agenda item C at this time. Comments from the floor. Um, any person wishing to speak on any item not on the agenda will be granted three minutes. And, um, we have uh, Mr. Russell Silva. Good evening, board members, administration, and viewing audience. My name is Russell Silva. Lori Anderson, performing artist, composer, and magician sa musician said, performing art is about joy. It's about making beauty out of something that is so full of any kind of wild joy that you really can't put words to it. And it's that joy that is in the soul of the performing artist. And it's that joy that those people that could not make it to the Ritz this following weekend, they missed that joy. The, to sing and to dance and, to, and the poetic uh, in inspiration that our students, the children, <laughs> ranging in ages from 18 to seven years old, these performers put joy back into the day in, and in words that we could not use. This board, this district, needs to take a genuine and compassionate look into the possibility of expanding our performing <coughs> arts division to all school sites and to give the, the youth, our future stars, a place to shine. And so that they could follow in the footsteps of some of our great notable Eisenhower alumni, such as Clarence, Gil Clarence Gilliard, a television actor who was on Matlock and Walker, Texas Ranger. Kurt Fogg, 
who's an actor, a writer, a song uh, singer, and a director, and who hosted N Nickelodeon's Legends of the Hidden Temple. Wilson Cruz, also a television actor who was on My So-Called Life and Sister, Sister, as well as famous John Singleton, we all know as a script writer, or a screenwriter, producer, director of the movies Boys in the Hood and P Poetic Justice. This district needs to allow the students to expand their minds and broaden their opportunities for success, not just in the business world, but in the arts as well. Paul Ostergaard, Vice President of Citicorp said, a broad education in the arts helps children under better understand their world. We need students who are culturally literate as well as math and science literate. The arts also brings people together from all ages, religious faiths, and nationalities, united for one cause, one singular cause, to dance, to laugh, to create, to dream, to believe, and to perform. David Rubenstein, the financier and philosopher uh, and, and philanthropist and current chairman of the Kennedy Center for the Performing Arts said, the world is a complicated place and there's a lot of division between people. Performing arts tends to unite people in a way that nothing else does. <laughs> so consider expanding the arts program in the Reality Unified School District. Because when, you, when your passion is ignited, your future is brightened and your dreams become reality. Whether you, it's through dance or singing or acting, it's all about more than just steps, your voice and your performance. It's about life lessons. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Silva. Next up, we have uh, Mr. Michael Cervantes. Thank you. Good evening. Um, my name is Michael Cervantes. I'm here on behalf of uh, Congresswoman Norma Torres uh, just to uh, present some information about our 2015 Congressional Art Competition. Uh, each spring, uh, the Congressional Institute sponsors a nationwide high school visual art competition uh, to recognize and encourage artistic talent throughout the nation. Uh, since the competition began in 1982, more than 650,000 students have participated in this competition. Uh, this year, Congresswoman Torres has the opportunity to select a winner from the 35th Congressional District, which includes the city of Rialto. Um, the culmination of the competition will be a year-long display uh, in the Canyon Building in Washington, D.C., and the winner will be flown to Washington, D.C. Uh, as well with uh, a guest uh, to, to go ahead and visit their artwork. So it's a great opportunity uh, for any student. You don't have to be uh, an art student. You can be just any high school student uh, and participate. Uh, there's no fee. And so we just wanted to present this information and let you know that the cutoff date uh, to enter the competition will be 5 o'clock uh, Monday, March 23rd. And you can go on our website, torres.house.gov, www.torres.house.gov, for more information. I have some flyers I'm going to leave in the lobby for anybody who's interested. So uh, hopefully some students uh, will participate, and uh, we like to get as m you know all our cities uh, to be involved in this competition. So thank you. Thank you. Uh, and just to piggyback, um, I believe uh, the district received an email um, from Congressman Norma Torres' office regarding that art competition. Let's make sure uh, every all the principals and all the school <coughs> sites get that uh, email so in case any students do want to participate. Sure. Um, next up, Mr. Blaze Ray. Oh, I'm sorry. My name is Blaze Ray and I'm here as a representative from Eisenhower High School. I'd like to apologize for my lack of materials. If you would like them later, um, I can give you my email and send them out to you. Could you bring the microphone down just a little bit? Sorry about that. Um, I'm here today because the Eisenhower students were presented with a survey at fourth period. After expressing concern about the survey, I talked to Administrator Jerry Sturmer, and he said that the cause of the survey was that the district had expressed concern about the declining number of purchased school lunches. He said that the district feels that the matter is due to the singular current 
to the current singular lunch period Eisenhower offers. After interviewing staff and students, everyone felt that it was important that we maintain the singular, the singular lunch period rather than move into a dual lunch period. Um, as the flyers I handed out were the reasoning for this and quotes from different staff and students that felt equally concerned on the matter. Uh, one of the reasons that, that, excuse me, one of the reasons that concern was expressed was because the majority of clubs on campus are held at lunchtime. If we move into a dual lunch program, it eliminates the meeting, it, it eliminates the meeting time for these clubs, takes out the number of members, and also creates chaos within the club, being that some of the cabinet members and the advisors would be in separate lunch periods. The teachers also felt, in addition to this, that it would eliminate time for student-teacher interaction and also tutoring time that is well needed by the students. Faculty member Diane Carter said that she feels that the, she feels that the declining number of purchased lunches is not due to the singular lunch program, but rather than, but rather than that, the actual food at the school. She has seen spoiled yogurt, fuzzy fruits and vegetables, and has heard claims of students who eat the food that it isn't fresh and it isn't cooked. Student, uh, senior Edgar Vargas said that it would be better to elongate the singular lunch than go into the two lunch. That way it would not spoil the extracurricular activities. There was a lot of expressed concern today by staff and students and we feel that the separation of the lunches would cause more truancies and also cost the district more money due to those truancies. We ask that the board please consider the, consider the decision a lot before they make their decision because we do not want we do not want the additional chaos that comes along with the dual lunch program. Thank you for your time this evening. Thank you, Miss Ray. <laughs> Next we have Mrs. Celia Salaya. Buenas noches, miembros de la mesa directiva. Good evening, uh, members of the board uh, of directors. Buenas noches. Superint super buenas noches, Mr. Wong. <laughs> Superintendente Interino, Mr. Island, y audiencia. Uh, audience. Soy Celia Celaya. My name is Celia, uh, Celia Celaya. Coordinadora de Amigos Unidos, Grupo uh, de Apoyo. Of United Friends. Grupo de Apoyo para uh, Padres de Niños Especiales. Is a support group for uh, students with special needs, or uh, children with special needs. Queremos agradecer a Mr. Island. And we'd like to uh, give our thanks and appreciation to Mr. Island. Porque los niños especiales de la Carter High School. Because the children from Carter High School with special needs. Ya no están recogiendo basura they're ni reciclando. Not, they're, not even, they're not picking uh, garbage anymore, trash or recycling anymore. También queremos expresar nuestro agradecimiento a Mr. Ayala y a Mr. Montes and por su like apoyo. And we'd like to express our uh, gratitude to Mr. Montes and Mr. Ayala for your support. Reiteramos nuestro apoyo a la señora del Río. And also to Mrs. Rios, we're also extending our gratitude. Directora de Educación Especial. And she's the director of the Special Education. Por el buen trabajo que está haciendo. For the great job that she's doing. Por sus conocimientos académicos en el ramo de la Educación Especial. And for her knowledge in, in the branch of uh, Special Education. Entendemos que todavía hay mucho por hacer en Educación Especial. And we understand there's a lot to be done in Special Education. Pues recordamos que fueron alrededor de 150 las recomendaciones de FICMA. And we recall that there were about 150 uh, recommendations of FICMA. Y por eso es que estamos pidiendo su apoyo a la señora del Río. And this is why we ask Mrs. Rio for her support. Proveyéndole todos los recursos y la ayuda necesaria para la educación especial. Uh, by providing the necessary tools or resources for special education. En nuestro distrito para que nuestro distrito tenga éxito. So our district will have the success. Gracias por su apoyo a la educación. Thank you for your support uh, in education. Y nosotros también continuaremos apoyando a nuestro distrito y a nuestra mesa directiva. And we'll continue to support our uh, boards and our district. Gracias. Thank you. Thank you. 
Thank you, gracias, Mr. Salaya. Uh, that concludes public comment. Uh, at this time, would anybody else like to uh, come forward for public comment before we close public comment? Did you do public comment on the agenda? Um, I, I, I apologize. Um, I only have uh, <coughs> slips for items not on the agenda. Does anybody have uh, any comment for items on the agenda? Okay, hearing none, then um, we'll go ahead and go on to item three, C3, comments from association executive board members. Uh, the Rialto Education Association, uh, do you, would you like to take the floor? Good evening, school board, interim superintendent, Mohammed Islam, community members, TV watchers. Uh, my name is Lisa Lindbergh, president of the Rialto Education Association. I have just a couple things tonight. Uh, first of all, I would like to give my thanks and uh, great gratitude to uh, Moira Borgia in Fiscal Services. We had a little mix up last month with some of our teachers who teach a one-sixth, and for some reason the paperwork didn't get to personnel services and then didn't get to the departments. Anyway, that happens. And uh, she made sure they got paid mid-month. They were supposed to be paid February 1st, and she really worked with everyone to make sure they were paid mid-month. And the teachers appreciated it, I know I did, and I just think she did a fantastic job. Uh, the other thing I have is, one of the things you have on your agenda, um, I noticed that you had already approved, um, it, and it's, it's on here again tonight, is something about uh, Casey Elementary on page five. You approved that at the last board meeting. And the reason I know is because a friend of mine is back there with her youngsters and they're running around, they're little two-year-olds, and I asked her why she was here. And um, she's here in case there are any questions about this uh, field trip. But it was, I told her, I said it was already approved at the last board meeting. So I just wanna point that out. I don't know why it was, uh, it's on here again. It's, and I looked, it's the exact same wording. So I, I just wanted to point that out. And then my third thing is uh, there were two community LCAP meetings last week, and unfortunately um, the one at Kolb was very poorly attended. Um, the one at Morris was a little better attended, but I think that if perhaps, uh, and this came from a, a teacher who lives in our district, she thought that maybe if it was in the Rialto record that there was going to be a meeting, you'd get more of a turnout from parents. Uh, uh, I've noticed in different school districts that they put it up on the marquees that there's going to be an LCAP meeting and then you have more people coming. I, I just don't think there was enough notice for parents. I think there would have been more turnout and, and, and maybe more time for them to talk about what they wanted. And that's all I have tonight. Thank you for your time. Thank you, Ms. Lindbergh. Uh, next up, we have uh, California School Employees Association. Do we have any representatives? Okay. Anybody else from CSEA? Okay. Good evening, board. Good evening, Good evening. Good evening. Mr. Islam, and other administrators and audience. Um, I do want to say that um, the, we did, um, I'm on the Ritz Committee, which is an, a really um, great group of people that volunteer our time to um, put that event on. And um, we work together so well as a team. But I guess <coughs> really where I would like to put some um, emphasis on is the classified staff that work behind the scenes. We've got the lighting guy, we've got the sound guy, mm -hmm. we have the custodians that help us set everything up ahead of time, we have the custodians that clean up after the event. And um, you know, they put in a lot of time, yes they do get paid for it, but it's long days for them and it's long hours and it's above and beyond their call of duty. And um, I really think that we should acknowledge them in that, in that aspect. And um, to Saida Jaffrey for doing the great job that she does and pulling it all together. So thank you. Thank you, Ms. Silva. Do we have anybody uh, present tonight from the Communication Workers of America that would like to comment? Good evening, board and 
uh, interim uh, superintendent Islam. I also was at the uh, putting on the Ritz, and I agree with Mr. Silva that it has to do a lot of things. Uh, I was amazed at the talent that I saw, and especially for Miss O'Kelly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but I also attended along with uh, Heather the LCAP meeting at Morris, and we learned a few things. But I, I got to tell you one thing: I brought my grandson to putting on the Ritz, and I was really—it <laughs> was great seeing the mothers get to dance with their sons. Mm -hmm. And then a little later on, that little girl from first grade that sang, uh, Ariana Rodriguez, mm -hmm. I was blown away. <laughs> and uh, yeah, then that's beautiful. <laughs> yeah, it was. <laughs> and then Aiden Lowe in doing the poetry, yeah. I actually expected him to go a little longer than he did, <laughs> but uh, he didn't. But when we left, we were walking out, and I didn't think I'd won anything. I looked at my phone, and I had no text message. But I had bid on four items. So we left, going along, and this little guy, Isaac Espinosa, he was the one that was in the motorcycle jacket. Cruising for a bruising. <laughs> <laughs> he comes up to us and looks at my grandson and he says, you want my autograph? <laughs> <laughs> oh. My grandson gives him the program oh. and he signed it. Oh. <laughs> oh. And, uh, Terrific. And I'll just close with one thing. I know that we've already uh, sunshine our proposals and you sunshine yours back. But uh, on the Ritz, I won. I won. I consider it winning when you <laughs> have the winning bid. I got something that uh, I'm going to be happy to learn to do. I won the knitting basket. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Fletcher. We go on next to item D on tonight's agenda, public hearing. Uh, we'll go ahead and uh, take a, would anybody like to motion to open public hearing? So moved. Do we have a second? Second. Thank you. Uh, all in favor? Aye. 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 Uh, any person wishing to speak on items on the public hearing agenda will be granted three minutes. Uh, first uh, item is, uh, public hearing pursuant to the requirements of governmental code and board policy the initial 2015 th through 2016 proposal submitted by the Rialto Education Association for an agreement between REA Board of Education and the Rialto Unified School District is hereby posted in compliance with the legislative requirements for public notice uh, do we have anybody that would like to comment uh, regarding the first item under public hearing Is it for CWA? No, sir. Okay, go ahead. This is a question that I have. As I said, my name is Ron Fletcher, and I'm just a public person right now, but looking at this proposal, uh, I see high school counselors and middle school counselors. What happened to grade school counselors? Do you have them in this district? Because I know that I have fought hard in San Bernardino to get a counselor in each school. And because uh, I, I have a daughter-in-law who's a counselor, and she was handling a couple of elementary schools. And so I really highly recommend you guys looking into getting a counselor, mm -hmm. at least having uh, one that's shared between two schools, which is not a great idea, but it's better than none. That's my only observation. Thank you, Mr. Fletcher. <laughs> is there anybody else that would like to comment on the first item under public hearing? See, seeing that there's none, uh, we'll go on to item two, public hearing uh, pursuant to the requirements of governmental code and board policy, the initial contract full proposal uh, for the 2015 through 18 school years is submitted by the Rialto mm -hmm. Unified School District for an agreement between the Communication Workers of America, Board of Education, and the Rialto Unified School District is hereby posted in compliance with the legislative requirements for public notice. Do we have anyone that would like to comment on the second item? <coughs> <coughs> hearing none, uh, do we have a motion to close public hearing? So moved. Thank second. you, Ms. Thank you, Ms. O'Kelly, Mr. Martinez. All in favor? Aye. 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 
Consent calendar items, all items on the consent calendar will be acted upon in one motion unless pulled by the Board of Education, members, or the interim superintendent for individual action. Uh, do, do we have a preferential vote by student board member? Aye. Thank you, Ms. Angulo. Do we have a uh, motion uh, by members of the board to approve this item? So Could moved. These items. Thank you, Mr. Ayala. Do we have a second? Second. Thank you, Mr. Martinez. Do we have a discussion regarding any items E through J? Uh, I do six, seven, and nine. I mean, I'm sorry, uh, G679. Thank you. Okay, so with that, um, if it's okay with the board, uh, we can approve all other items if there's no discussion regarding the other items or questions, and then uh, separately uh, uh, vote on uh, six, seven, G679. Uh, do we have a motion to approve all items except for six, seven, and nine, E through J? So, so moved. Thank you, Mr. Ayala. Second? Walker and Mom is second. Thank you, Ms. Walker. <laughs> um, all in favor? Aye. 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 So <coughs> items E through J except for G, six, seven, and nine have just been approved. 5-0 vote. On to G6. Uh, would you like to read the item, <coughs> Ms. Kelly? Um, well, it's approved Eisenhower High School, Future Homemakers of America, Home Economics Related Occupations, FHA Hero students and advisors to attend the FHA Hero State Leadership Conference and competitions April 23rd to 25th, uh, 2015 in Fresno, California. Six and seven, I have the same comment about um, even though uh, a trip or something is going to be paid for out of ASB funds or s some kind of site funds, the cost needs to be included in the agenda for the board to approve. Um, both six and seven, there was no cost. This came up before a while back, and I think uh, the principals need to be reminded to remind their people whatever they're submitting, you must have a cost, like a cost per student and a uh, final cost or not to exceed cost or something and also of course where the money's coming from <clears throat> that was just a comment I'm not saying I don't want to approve them this time but I do want that message to get uh, delivered to the schools <clears throat> and number G9 <clears throat> when I read this it said that each, uh, they want to just, the, they're going to distribute the PTA funds because the PTA was dissolved. And they want to distribute it equally uh, per student to provide field trips. So I'm, I'm kind of wondering how they are going to do this because that amount of money divided upon by the number of students in the school might be like, what, three or four dollars a piece. Are they each going to have their own little account? How are they, if they, they kind of emphasize they want to distribute it equally per student, and so do we know how they plan on doing that? Um, may I will refer to Jasmine, please. Could you respond? It's not necessarily equally per students, but to provide study trips for the students of Morris Elementary School, because they're going to go on with a PTO rather than a PTA, and these were funds that were left in the PTA right. funds? I understand that, but the wording that was in the back of the agenda says equally per student, and that means to me each student in Receives that school is going to get the exact same amount of money. Right, right. It does uh, interpret that way. But uh, it will be used for study trips, and if they use it equally per student, then it will s subsidize, supplement the study trip accounts they already have. Okay. All right. Do we have any more uh, questions uh, regarding these three items? <coughs> okay. Um, see none. Then uh, do we have a motion to approve item G6, 7, and 9? Move to approve items uh, G6, 7, and 9. Second. Okay. Uh, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Mm -hmm. Aye. Oh, good. 
Next up, we go to item K. Discussion action items, and uh, just for clarification, these will not be approved. These will not be approved as a consent uh, item. As consent items, these will be read individually and acted upon individually. First item for action for uh, item K1 is to adopt the resolution number 141558, first five San Bernardino for the 2015 through 16 budget for preschool program. Do we have a motion to approve item K1? So moved. Thank Second. You. Thank you, Mr. Mayor and Mr. Martinez. And uh, hearing discussion, go ahead, Ms. O'Kelly. Well, I'm just wondering, there's obviously going to be a financial gap here because of the budget cut for first five. Um, I believe our, our preschool used to be self-sufficient, didn't it? Uh, yes, but uh, not anymore because of the um, uh, uh, enrollment being being as we're working on to bring enrollment at 100 percent level we're not there yet so at present time we are we are our general fund um contributions was provided to bring the program at the 100 percent level so and in other words the district will be paying or bridging the gap financially for the preschool program preschool not for first five. First five is done by the county uh, county so the this this program um funded by the county county first five uh, and uh, our district's going to be re receiving every year right. the, the amount so this program but it's going to be short now so who's going to fill in that well, gap we they're reduced by two thousand dollars you can see mm -hmm. that so we're going to adjust the program uh and run up to the amount of the grant so meaning we this okay. this has to be self-support okay Any more questions regarding uh, item K1? Okay, do we have a motion to approve item K1? So moved. Second. Thank you. All in favor? Aye. 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 Next on item K2. Approve the 2015, 2000, 2014 through 2015 second interim financial report as presented. And uh, there's a reference K2.1 through 2 on the back of the agenda. Do we have a motion to approve item K2? So moved. Thank you, Ms. Martinez. Do we have a second? Second. Thank you, Ms. Walker. Uh, do we have any discussion? Well, I'd just like to ask something. Okay. Um, Mr. Islam, those financial reports are, are not in a, a manner or a language that is easily digested. Mm -hmm. um, I remember two years ago, you gave us a budget report and uh, with a PowerPoint, whatever, very outlined everything, very easy to understand. Um, I think the board would appreciate that. So it's, it makes a little bit more sense to us. On these financial reports, we basically look to see if we got a positive certification, but you know, We'd like a little more information on the budget. Yes, we can do that. Okay. Appreciate it. Uh, we'll, we'll get back and give you the, d the more detail w other than just kind of numbers. Right. It's all numbers and it's. <laughs> <laughs> I realize that. That's, 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 that's we'll my kind of reading, though. Yes, uh, we will provide the detail and with a simple format. That must be very boring. <laughs> <laughs> it keeps me up at night. <laughs> Any make a comment. Go, yes. go ahead. Thank you. Just another comment on the uh, certification of the financial report. Uh, sometimes we have to make tough decisions because if we don't get that positive certification, uh, it's good to share with you that uh, we lose our bond rating and overnight uh, the interest goes up, interest rate goes up, and it, it could be a million dollars charged to the district or more. So. We we have to be real careful if when we get the report and it's positive or prior to getting the report, 
when we get recommendations that we have to stay toe the line, this is one of the reasons that we do that, so that we don't end up going backwards. Good, good point, Mr. Ayala. Are you ready for a vote? All in favor? Aye. 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 Next, we have item K3, approve the recommendations of the administrative hearing panel. Uh, and we have two case numbers. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and ask for a separate vote on these two case numbers. We'll start with the first one, first case, 14-15-43. Um, do we have a motion to, well, first, do we have a motion to approve the item? I apologize. So moved. Do we have a second? Second. Thank you, Ms. O'Kelly, Mr. Martinez. Okay, now um, we'll go ahead and ask for a uh, roll call vote for uh, case numbers 14-15-43. Um, starting with Mr. Martinez. Aye. Mr. Ayala. Aye. Uh, myself will be a no. Mrs. O'Kelly. Yeah, aye. Uh, Miss Miss Walker. No. Okay, motion carries three, two. Um, and then last uh, case number 14-15-40, Mr. Martinez? Aye. Mr. Ayala? Aye. Uh, myself is an aye, Mrs. O'Kelly? Aye. And Ms. Walker? Aye. All righty. That brings us to item L, comments from in the interim superintendent. Take it away, Mr. Mohammed Islam. Thank you, President Montes. A um, uh, couple of items I'd like to uh, report tonight. Uh, the to all elementary school will have open house tomorrow, uh, tomorrow e evening, uh, which is March 12th, uh, beginning five. Uh, some of the school has a, a six until 7.30. I send you the schedules uh, if have on Friday. Uh, please, uh, if you have time, please visit our schools. It's, it's, uh, you'll see the parents, a lot of um, a lot, you know, get children, the parents get, uh, being, uh, the excitement being a school, being open house. Uh, I'd like to see you there if you, if you have a time, but again, it's tomorrow. Every elementary school uh, will be have open house tomorrow, beginning five. Um, our spring break, uh, beginning next week, uh, March 16th through March 27th. School it will not be in session. Parents will have a break. And students will have a break. <laughs> <laughs> the, the Parents will wish they had a break. <laughs> <laughs> the next items, um, as a, um, uh, there was a discussions at the last board meeting, uh, concerns about the board room expansion project. I want to report this tonight to the uh, bo to you um, board and the community. We're not going forward with that project at this time. So that is not an issue. Anybody should have a concern about that project. That is, uh, um, that project will not be, will not be coming back, um, um, not near future. Um, with that, um, uh, I thank everyone for being here tonight. Thank you, Interim Superintendent, Mr. Islam. Next, we'll go to our student board member, Mrs. Angulo. Good evening, everyone. Um, <laughs> Good evening. Um, on Saturday, I attended Putting on the Ritz, and the students are so talented. And it was it was a really good event, a really good show. I would really um, anyone um, involved in the committee. It was amazing. You guys did great. Mm -hmm. And also today for DSAC, we had Ms. Valenzuela give us a presentation on the LCAP, on the Local <laughs> Control Accountability Plan. And it's just, I, um, we all greatly appreciate that you're keeping us in the loop, and th we thank you for that. And I hope you all have a great spring break, and good night, everyone. Thank you. Thank you, Marisol. Next up, we go to board member, Mr. Joe Martinez. Thank you, uh, President Montez. Um, I'd also like to comment on the Ritz. If you missed it, you missed a good one. It's probably the best one I've ever seen. Um, it was entertaining throughout. Um, in my opinion, no lulls at all. Sometimes um, there, there are kind of a, a little dip in, in the entertainment. This time there really wasn't. 
Um, I'd like to thank the two ladies on the board for screening and Joseph <laughs> Williams for, for screening and congratulate uh, Nancy O'Kelly on her reigning win <laughs> in the dancing category. I'm going to be dancing on Dancing with the with Stars, the stars <laughs> yes. <laughs> and um, it, it was good. Thank you to the committee members. Uh, you work tirelessly behind the scenes and you don't don't expect anything that, that's true community spirit and community giving. Thank you from my heart, from the board. I'm sure we all, all convey that. Um, Frisbee career day was great. Um, most of you know that I'm not a morning person. I stay up nights and read boring numbers. <laughs> <laughs> And, um, and I'm also a closet guitar player. So um, I, I love doing that and working on uh, luthery, which is guitar repair. And um, that, that's what I do. Those are, that's one of my hobbies. Um, luckily, the wife sleeps at one end, and I make noise at the other <laughs> end. And she's very tolerable. Toler she's very tolerant of me and has been for 45 years. Thank you, sweets. Um, uh, she told me something that I have not been able to follow up on, but that the Common Core was suspended um, starting for one year, that it was basically, um, we don't have to start it on time next year, that it's held back for one more year. Heard it in the news in passing, so we'll probably get more information about that. If, if nothing else, I'll have to wonder uh, why she's giving me, you know, information that she was snoring during during that part <laughs> um, other than that um, mr. Montez thanks for running a good meeting you're getting better at it and uh, and uh, they are good thank you mr. Martinez thank you I appreciate it we're trying we're trying <laughs> I'm looking at the time clock over there. It says 8:05, and I, I'm in shock, really. Yeah. Um, but, but again, it's not the goal of do them to do them really fast. It's just try to be efficient. <laughs> yeah. So, um, with that, Mr. Uh, Yalit, would you like to give your board report? Sure. Uh, thank you, President Montes, and good evening, uh, staff and community. Uh, always try to share little words of wisdom or something that will benefit kids and parents and our community. I think I've said this before, but perhaps maybe not everybody's heard it, but you know, we have kids that are incorrigible. We have kids that won't behave. We have kids that will act up. I have grandkids that uh, can define what I just mentioned there, you know, and, and we're challenged with them. So what do we do with these kids? Well, I don't think anybody has the exact science on what to do with these kids, but uh, if, if you go to the jails and you ask one question, um, what do you think that question would be to find out why a lot of those uh, young people are incarcerated? And the answer to that question would be, what happened to you at age 12? And people say, well, why age 12? Well, that's kind of the age of puberty. And when kids reach that age, um, they're very uh, uh, volatile. They're uh, easily persuaded. Uh, a lot of them can't sit in a chair for very long. They're very active. And if they're trauma traumatized in any way, uh, their s body chemistry, uh, it's called serotonin. It's not like a doctor up here, but I'm not. And it, uh, it gets depleted. And when it gets depleted, a lot of our kids, they're vulnerable to making poor choices. So if you're a parent and you're, you have a troubled child, yelling at them is not going to help. In fact, everyone else is yelling at them where they're at. So when they come home, you hug them, you love them, you feed them, you give them comfort. Uh, my mother gave me unconditional love. She said, son, 
what, whatever you want to do. I just want you to be happy. You don't have to do anything to impress me. And I know sometimes, you know, if you're on the sidelines and your child's playing a sport, you want them to be the top person in that endeavor. But, you know, they're there playing <coughs> and they're alive and they're breathing. And so, you know, I'm using my time right now to try to encourage people to try to be a little more understanding, a little more patient. Don't be so short with your kids. And then uh, I will close on this one issue. I got one comment on something else. But I will say that, you know, our kids are not impressed with how much we know. I think you know what they're impressed by, and that's how much we care. And uh, we have a lot of caring people here. I see them every time we come to a board meeting. And uh, with that being said, uh, I want to throw a plug in for the Rialto Unified School District Golf League. It will start <laughs> March 19th. I hope Tom is there. Find a partner. I'm bringing my wife out. Uh, we're going to try not to come in last. Uh, <laughs> and then when we do get a partner or somebody plays with us, if, you, if we're too slow for you, just go ahead and go. No, no, no problem. I hope Mr. Silva comes out. He's a golfer. <laughs> That's uh, 5 o'clock on Thursday. I don't want to put you on the spot. I know you're a businessman. <laughs> but if you can do it, it's only nine holes. And what an opportunity to let our hair down and just relax a little bit and get to know each other a little better. Thank you so much. Thank you, Mr. Joyala. <laughs> Next, we go to our board clerk, Miss Dina Walker. Thank you. Um, just really quick, I'm looking at the time, too. I'm like, oh my God, I'm going to be home, hopefully. Yeah, but yeah I'm yeah. like, I'm excited. <laughs> uh, so, just to kind of go back to uh, the student comment who on, on, the, on the board about Eisenhower going to two lunches and the you know, pros and cons of that. I just it just made me go back to the days uh, when I was in 10th grade I went from high school from middle school to high school 10th grade at that time um, back in the 80s um, and they had two lunches my sophomore year they had two lunches and people on one track who were college bound they had the first lunch and everybody else had the second lunch and all my friends had second lunch and by the end of my 10th grade year I had passed out of my second semester passed only five classes out of six um, because I chose to go to the lunch with my with my friends, mm -hmm. um, and that really was that was my decision. Because all of my friends all went, to, I would go to their class, their PE class at third period or fourth period. That was right before lunch, and that was the whole scenario. And at the end of, in June, <laughs> I ended up passing one out of six classes. Um, but it was a socialization. Fa it only because all of my friends and everything, and that was a bigger factor for me, even though my college bound aspirations, you know. So just in thinking about that, and I'm glad to see that the students actually thought it out enough to do a survey and to get input and feedback to, get, to provide the district impact, because what are the reasons why we are changing that? And I'm hoping that it's not just because less kids are paying for lunch at a certain, you know, during that lunch right. period. Right. That, that should not be the reason why we impact mm -hmm. the lives and the engagement of students on campuses, not for that. Um, so just let, just make sure that we do our due, dil due diligence too about our reasoning for wanting to change and that we um, take into, account, into consideration how it impacts the students as well. Um, so that that's the first thing. Second thing is um, LCAP meetings. Uh, I am, you know, kind of disappointed to hear that we had a low in low um, turnout at our LCAP meetings on um, this past week. I wish I could have been there at least to you know see and, and see for myself what that engagement was um, or uh, uh, participation. Um, but I had a full schedule this week, um, <coughs> and one of those parts of it was attending the um, unconscious bias training with the teachers and some other members of our district, which was very enlightening. Um, so going back to LCAP, we definitely as before we f submit our <coughs> final draft and we do have another committee meeting to see our final draft of our LCA LCAP, that we do put more time and energy in diversifying how we publicize those meetings so that we do have um, an <coughs> opportunity for more people to be involved um, and have input. And that we schedule the meeting so that we don't talk, meaning our administration doesn't talk all the way through it not to have the community to have input. Um, so th point taking uh, community <laughs> letting us know that um, and uh, our, uh, REA as well. Um, and then just to move to the unconscious bias training, um, 
very enlightening those two days to learn and, and, and about our own biases and, and things of that sort to help us be better interact not only with our students but also with our, our own staff because it is a different world than when, even when I grew up um, so that we are we are conscious about what we do and the things that are unconsciously how we're ingrained and brought up and kind of what we do um, to help to better engage and serve our students and as well as our staff. Um, I'm hoping that our district does uh, al allow another opportunity, several other opportunities, so that more staff can actually participate in the training. So I know that'll be something that you all will work out um, with REA and, and the other, um, uh, other employees in the district. Um, and then lastly, the Ritz. Yes, the Ritz was, oh my God, that was my first time ever going. And I am so embarrassed because, yes, I got embarrassed uh, by getting... <laughs> turned out by <laughs> my <laughs> first member, Nancy O'Kelly. I just thought we were going up there to talk about our time as judges. And I, so I got hoodwinked into that and realized that I'm supposed to be dancing. And if had I known that, I wouldn't have wore heels and I would have lost 20 pounds. And then I would have <laughs> Right. It was a great day. Um, and I just want to say thank you to the uh, classified employees, um, certificate, everybody who participated in that, because it was really classy. And we walked in and we saw the decorations on the walls, the light, everything um, from the food, uh, even just, I mean, every, the, the ROTC kids, I mean, you know, walking in the VIP interest, they, you know, stood up and put their, I guess their gut, whatever they put up and made the, you know. And I'm thinking, why are they doing that? Is somebody behind me? Like, you know, <laughs> is somebody coming that I don't know about? And it was all for the VIP entrance. And just that formality, um, the regalness of the uh, whole event, um, again, accolades to the entire team that put that together, because uh, it was phenomenal. And I say that to say because after that, this week I've had on two different occasions, two different places, people come up to me and say, I attended the Ritz. You guys did such a good job. And they were thanking me like I did it. I was mm. like, oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> 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 um, but yeah, two different occasions. So again, thank you for everybody who participated in that. That is really a pearl, you know, in our necklace for Rialto. So continue the good job. I'm um, looking forward to see everybody after, oh, we still won't be after spring break, but at the end of the month, <laughs> next meeting, thank you. Thank you, Ms. Walker. Uh, okay, last but not least, um, here I go, and unfortunately, oh, wait, wait. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Oh. I'm so right sorry. <laughs> I am so sorry. I am not a woman who will be ignored, Mr. Montes. <laughs> you should know that. Right. Her dancing says it all. <laughs> I apologize, Mrs. Nancy O'Kelly. On now on next to our <laughs> vice president, <laughs> Mrs. Nancy O'Kelly. <laughs> Thank you. Well, first, uh, I have to share my exciting personal news, which many of you know already. But yesterday, I became the proud grandma yet again of a 10-pound, 5-ounce baby boy, 23 inches long. Yes, we come from good, good bones. <laughs> uh, that was very exciting, and he's absolutely beautiful, and uh, I'm going over to see him again when we, when we leave here. Um, okay, well, I've been busy. I attended the Rialto High School WASC um, reception at the beginning of their WASC uh, visitation and the uh, report of findings at the end, and I'm very proud to say that the WASC visitation team was impressed with Rialto High School, because they probably met Marisol, because she's from Rialto High School, <laughs> um, and their staff and their students. They were all amazed at the parent uh, support and the interact their interaction on the campus. So Rialto High, kudos to you. Job well done. Keep it up. Um, I also attended Trap uh, Elementary School's 50th anniversary. I want to give a big shout out to Principal Roxanne Dominguez and her staff for a wonderful event. My own kids attended TRAP, so TRAP is very near and dear to my heart. And uh, I had not seen many of the people that were there for many years. They've retired and moved on, and it was just really great to, to see them again. On Saturday, I attended Mayor Deborah Robertson's event, uh, the ninth annual uh, The State of Women. Uh, this event has grown every year. There were probably about 500, 550 people there. We were in a big warehouse down on baseline that was all 
decorated nice and whatever. Very classy event, very meaningful and purposeful. Saturday night, I was at the Ritz. <laughs> And, uh, it, you know, for those of you who don't know, this is a, con uh, a, a show that displays our students' talents in the performing arts. Um, I have to say my own son is a musician and his career is really on the rise. And uh, he, he works at Apple to pay the bills, but he's, <laughs> he's heading, I think he's actually going to be able to sustain himself with his music. He's a jazz musician, plays all the saxophones and everything else. And, um, but that's in his soul. It's in his blood. So Russell, what you said tonight hit home. What if he had not had those opportunities? You know, amazing. So um, I really love the Ritz. I have attended the Ritz since it began many, many years ago and have loved it every year. Uh, the funds raised from the Ritz, are distributed to our performing arts teachers and classes so that they can do special things with their um, <clears throat> children. The one thing I would like to say, as many years as I've attended the Ritz, I know there's some schools in the district that have never ha been represented. So I want a goal for next year, Saida, that we have at least one act from every school try out. Okay, to make, and we might have to nudge the principals a little bit to make sure that happens. But I really think there's, we have, we see all the hidden talent we have out there, and sometimes it just gets overlooked because, you know, we haven't uh, stressed it enough. Uh, Monday night, I attended a CSBA workshop on effective boardmanship, which is very good. Um, very worthwhile. I learned a lot. We had a lot of fun and look forward to the next one I'm going to go to. And regarding lunches at Eisenhower, your name is Blaze. Blaze, you weren't there when I was principal, but I used to be the principal of Eisenhower. So Eisenhower is also near and dear to my heart. Um, I, you know, most of the reasons for two lunches is the number of students in the school and safety, especially at the high school level. I think they thought if you have 3,000 kids out at one lunch and any kind of trouble starts, that can, that can escalate. But from what I understand, Eisenhower, they went to one lunch and they have not had those problems at all, right? And as a former administrator at Eisenhower, I can tell you what, truancy with two lunches is rampant. <laughs> if they have two, they all, everybody has friends at the other lunch, so they ditch that class and um, meet up with their friends and they just take two lunches. And, Tracking that down with when you have close to 3,000 students is very difficult to keep on top of. So if uh, um, at all, I hope you can keep your single lunch because it seems to be working there. You've got the size campus that it works at. The other thing I want to bring up, Mr. Islam, and I brought this up before, I have had students from each of the high schools complain about the food. Something's got to be done, and you're absolutely right. If they're not buying the lunch, it's probably because they don't like the food. So we need to get with you nutrition services. Maybe I want to get some kids from each of the high schools to meet with them and tell them what their complaints are and see if we can fix this. Uh, Mr. Kelly, yes, we are working on it, and uh, we heard from the students, uh, GSEC students. I, I listened to their concern mm -hmm. that students do not uh, enjoy the f uh, the quality, right. the food we serve. Right. So we have to. Uh, we are we are going to bring a report back to you uh, uh, once we collect um, the feedback from the students. So uh, what type of food they like to mm -hmm. have. And of course, we have to follow the nutrition guidelines and the state guidelines. So I understand that, but the food we got at like the Ritz and some school functions, which is yummy, this is not what the kids <laughs> are getting. <laughs> and, and it's nutritionally sound, especially that tuxedo moose cake. But, <laughs> 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 but so they can, I think we can do better. Yes. Okay. Oh, and that, that I guess is all I have for tonight. Thank you, and uh, you guys have a wonderful night, wonderful spring break. Hope you enjoy it, and we'll see you back here in a couple weeks. Mr. Montes, Th may I um, uh, clarify this um, uh, single lunch on Eisenhower? This is all audit funding. State auditors came uh, reviewed our program, 
I, I sent you the Friday as a board. I did not receive the report. I have a single page report. There's the two findings. This is the one of the major findings by the state because we, uh, they, their findings uh, s going to the Eisenhower School comparing with other high schools whom they serve to lunch. And they're saying, but because of Eisenhower serving one lunch, we our participation is, is not as high as it should be. And they also can express the concern of the, the length of time we, we, uh, for the students to eat meaning uh, they're not given enough time to eat the, m uh, the many, many students are throwing the food in the trash. Um, so this is a audit finding. So I will bring again, in the report. I, I beg to differ. You have 45 minutes for lunch, right? No, sir. Yes, they have a longer lunch yeah. period. You're correct. But by the time you serve the last person uh, is, uh, standing in the lunch uh, not line, time to eat. don't have time for eat. I, I, I too have, um, mm -hmm. well, first of all, let's give Miss Nancy O'Kelly a round of applause for her wonderful uh, board report. <laughs> Are you trying to shut me out? No, 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 no. <laughs> um, uh, regarding the uh, school lunch program, the regarding the dual lunches, um, I just also want to say that I, I hear the students loud and clear. I hear the staff that are in support of it loud and clear. But I do want to emphasize that um, uh, if if the district and if the school decides to keep uh, one one lunch uh, as opposed to two. You gotta. We ha they ha the students have to be spoken to and and reminded that if they want to keep a one a single lunch uh, uh, program as opposed to two lunches, then they need to keep in mind that if if any fights ever break out, um, that 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 can be very dangerous when you have all those students out at the same time. Um, let me just give you guys an example. I went to A.B. Miller High School in the 90s and when when i was over there they there a fight broke out not during lunch but during assemblies during the mass high school assemblies half of the school because not all the school would fit in the uh, gymnasium half the school would participate in the first assembly uh, or pep rally and then as that as that half of the school exited out one side back to their classes at the same time the other half of the school would exit their classes and enter at the same time so one group would be exiting the other group would be entering and they had two lunches over there for the same reason but they had the assemblies back to back well they had to change that they had to wait for the first half to go to class before they released the second half and let me tell you why because fight one fight broke out and then all of a sudden a bunch of fights broke out and the students that were in the first pep rally and the students that were going to the second pep rally they all not everyone was involved but there were so many students out so safety and security was overwhelmed teachers were overwhelmed how can you how can you control a couple thousand students you know so they changed that that part for that reason <coughs> now in the 90s were a little different times than then you know the early 2000s and then now you know we're in the teens uh but we have to keep in mind the ultimate the ultimate goal of every this uh district principal uh th as a leader of the school is the safety of the children the safety of the school in general um so these these are things we need to weigh out very carefully i understand the clubs it's more convenient for everybody you know the boyfriend doesn't have to ditch to the girlfriend's lunch and vice versa or, or the friends don't have to you know uh be separated by different lunches but at the end of the day we need to analyze what works best i have had complaints about children or students not being able to have enough time to eat because the lunch lines are so long now maybe that can be re maybe that can be taken care of by creating more lunch lines. I, I I don't know, but I think this is something, especially if the state has weighed in and audited and given some some suggestions and findings. We have to analyze this and and uh, really weigh the pros and cons mm -hmm. in general uh, for what's best for everyone and for what's the safest for everyone. Um, but with that said, I do appreciate Mrs. Blaze, Miss Blaze Ray coming here tonight to um, share. Um, the feedback from the students with that said I'm, I'm gonna go try to, I'm gonna try to streamline through this stuff because uh, I got a lot to um, talk about first of all I'd like to welcome everybody here tonight um, 
uh, buenas noches, bienvenidos. Um, and uh, the second thing I'd like to uh, discuss um, was, well, just mention, um, uh, I had the honor of attending the Traps uh, Elementary's uh, 50th anniversary uh, last week. Mm -hmm. um, Mr. Martinez was there, Ms. O'Kelly was there, um, and then we had also earlier that day gone to the WASC reception, uh, Mr. Martinez and Ms. O'Kelly and myself at Rialto High School. Uh, kudos to both schools, uh, 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 Trap Elementary. I found out a lot of history about Trap. Mm. They used to be the Trap Rats. And not then, rats, mice. Oh, trapped mice. My children. Were I'm sorry. Mice. I'm My sorry. My children were not they, rats. They used to, they used to be the trap mouses and the mouse trap, and now they're, they're the, then at one point they decided to change to the trap tigers. Timberwolves. Timberwolves. I'm sorry. The trap timberwolves. It's wolves. the Alto Middle School tigers. And uh, I mean, they gave a they gave a present they gave a presentation. It was awesome. Learned a lot. No, no, one of the things I want to say is um, a former employee, long-time employee there, I forgot her name, I didn't write it down, but she gave a, a so, sort of like a, a little speech poem called I Remember When. Oh, yes. And she talked about how, you know, in the big back in the days before smoking was outlawed, employees used to smoke in the office or in the break room, and mm -hmm. laws started changing, and cars. cars had to drive out, you know, to go uh, smoke cigarettes for those who smoke. And um, she started saying all these things about I remember when, right? And she said, 50 years from now, someone else will be re reading I remember when. And they'll be talking about all the changes that you guys are going to be going through. I thought that was really, uh, really uh, interesting. Um, the other thing I wanted to mention also, um, let's give a round of applause to uh, Saida Joffrey and Ricardo Carlos also. And you guys know why, those of you guys know why, for putting on the Ritz. Um, uh, you know, big kudos to the uh, Ritz Gala Committee also. Um, they do an awesome job. I know it would the, the event wouldn't have been possible without the Ritz Committee. Um, I just wanted to also recognize Saida and Ricardo Carlos for all of the hard work that they do, working behind in and behind the scenes. Um, we had again, uh, for those of you who listen to rock and roll music on the radio, we had KCAL um, uh, disc jockey uh, Jimbo. Jimbo. Uh, Jimbo from a morning show I'm not going to mention, but um, it's a very funny, very funny morning show and very funny guy, and he did an awesome job. Um, and all, the, all of the students performed very well. I, I want to give special thanks to the, mo the mothers. The first yes. opening act, there was parents that performed with their sons. The moms danced with their sons, and it was really beautiful to see yes. the parents uh, being able to perform. Uh, I don't know if it's the first time. It's the first time I've seen. First um, time we have parents. Yeah. The, the parents were, mothers were able to perform with their sons, students of our schools, um, opening uh, there for the uh, Ritz Gala. That was very beautiful. Um, and, and Ms. Silva's correct, you know, uh, big kudos to classified staff uh, for all their hard work. The, the ROTC and the Junior Navy, wasn't that awesome? Them meeting, greeting everybody at the red carpet with the swords up in the air. I was, mm -hmm. I was hoping it just wasn't going to come down on anybody, <laughs> you know, but that was very elegant, you know, to have a red carpet. And, and it was a really nice event for those that were able to attend. Um, uh, I do want to also um, uh, thank Mr. Silva for uh, his support in expanding the VAPA, the Visual Arts and Performing Arts uh, program in our district. I believe currently we only have it at one elementary school, Henry Elementary School, but it is definitely something we should expand to all of our elementary schools. Um, we just got to find a way to come up with the funding, um, but I'm sure that there's grants out there available. Um, I'm sure there's ways of looking looking for ways to raise those funds and, and, and bring those funds to this district for that program. I know there's been grants in the past that they've used for that specific program, and it would be, the Ritz is a wonderful example of why we should expand uh, the visual and performing arts. And uh, last but not least, I want to thank all the students that participated. Yeah. I like the kid that kept combing his hair like yeah. that with yeah. the yeah. hand and yeah. doing the whole rockabilly yeah. rock and roll thing. Mm -hmm. That was that was awesome. Mm -hmm. I couldn't understand a thing he was saying, but I know he was singing with his heart. <laughs> and he was so he was so little. He was like probably he looked like five years old. I'm not sure, but um, man, he gave a performance. And, and if I'm mistaken, I think that's the one that gave an autograph yeah. oh, to Mr. Fletcher. So that was that was awesome. It was really really nice. Uh, uh, I like to suggest that we record those yeah. video recorded yeah, we do. oh great we need to give that to real oh great we need to give that to the Rialto City Channel so they can air it oh great Th you're on it thank we you we should also sell thank them you, you the should parents. all we should <laughs> 
<laughs> oh, oh, okay. <laughs> well, we should offer Maybe those. <laughs> we should offer those for sale and to raise funds for the program itself. Um, I think there's a lot of people. I don't. I wouldn't mind buying a copy of you know me busting some moves, but I unfortunately, <laughs> I was outperformed by by Miss O'Kelly here, and she won the big prize of a whole whopping three dollars. Yeah, yeah. Last year I won a basket. So what happened this year? I get three bucks. <laughs> <laughs> So um, uh, again, big kudos to uh, the ROTC instructor and, uh, and and the Junior Navy and everybody, all the students out there that made it possible. Um, and we'll also want to thank our safety and security, you know, um, uh, for keeping us safe uh, everywhere, uh, you know, at any time. Uh, they're always there uh, to answer the call. Um, I want to thank uh, also the safety and security team, not just here at the district meetings, but also at, you know, at the special events at the school sites. Um, safety and security has really done uh, an awesome job. And uh, we also should give some recognition to uh, our safety and security chief, Mr. Gordon Leary for uh, doing a wonderful job. Um, I want to talk about the uh, ALCAP meetings. I want to piggyback on some of the comments that were made. Um, I, I, I too believe that we could do a better job in advertising mm -hmm. or informing the community about the ALCAP meetings. I think part of the problem is explaining what ALCAP stands for and what it means and what it is. A lot of people still don't really, uh, haven't really soaked it up, especially, uh, you know, um, people in the community that, that hardly have interactions, interactions with the district. Um, but we should definitely uh, do try to reach out to even the Spanish-speaking parents, yeah. you know, everyone uh, regarding the ALCAP to inform. If we have to have meetings in Spanish for some of our parents, I don't see a problem with that. Um, you know, and then, and then uh, even if we need to advertise on the Rialto Record, El Chicano, and all the other mm -hmm. local uh, newspapers and um, on the uh, Channel 3 cable channel there with Ria the city of Rialto, we should definitely uh, do at least another attempt at getting more feedback from the community before we turn in that final draft for the LCAP. Regarding the unconscious, unconscious bias training, I just want to thank the California Teachers Association and REA for offering that um, type of training for our staff here. Um, uh, you know, uh, if you guys recall, uh, CTA and REA offered to do this out of their own pocket, out of their own mm -hmm. free will to uh, help us get through some difficult um, uh, times that we were going through, particularly last year regarding, um, you know, uh, uh, possible insensitivity uh, ness so uh, also I want to talk about the California public records requests um, I, I want to make sure that we're doing everything possible to uh, answer any public records request most uh, for for those of you who don't know California Public Records Request Act obligates uh, uh, public agencies like ours to um, release public documents um, to the public upon the request during a certain amount of time frame um, and when when requests are made most of them are just general public requests for information we need to come up with a way to streamline any public records requests that come through so that they're so that it's efficient and then they're, gi they're given the information or the documents that are appropriate in a timely manner any public records requests that are that are requested that um, are confidential personnel uh, uh, that have personnel confidential uh, information or um, are attorney client privileged uh, those types of documents we need to I, I'd like for staff to look at coming up with a way to uh, for the board to analyze the district to analyze um, those types of requests and uh, give responses as soon as possible in regards to what can what can and can't be given in, a, in either in its entirety or in a redacted form um, or just can't be given out outright but we need to come up with a way to streamline that uh, so we don't have some of the issues that we had previous in the previous years. Um, but we have been we have made a huge improvements in that area. I, I just want to say real quick before I wrap it up that we're a million times, I think a million times better today than we were whenever any other any other at any other time in our district as far as 
just my personal opinion i think we've come a long way i think we're doing a lot of good things staff you know is, is really uh coming through on on sh on shining for, for a lot of good reasons uh the students are learning the students are happy about being at school marisol's happy as a student you know um the students are you know feel welcome here to come and share their ideas with the board um and i just want want to give a big kudos to to the whole district really and to all the, the staff and all the people that make this district um, you know, a learning institution for our kids because, um, you know, uh, sometimes we get asked about this or about that, about, you know, uh, how are you guys doing things different? We want to do things different. We want, we want to do things better. And, um, and we are, and, and I want to thank, uh, and, you know, we should give some thanks and recognition also to the interim superintendent, Mr. Islam, for uh, helping us through some very difficult times and getting us to where we're at today. Um, so regarding special ed, I want to thank the parents um, of special ed uh, for uh, constantly being involved, um, you know, and, and, and uh, being engaged. Um, uh, we do uh, take um, your comments and, and your, su your suggestions and, and your ideas. Um, we do take them serious, and we appreciate you um, coming here tonight to uh, recognize uh, some of our hardworking staff here and, and uh, for uh, uh, thanking the board and thanking the district for making improvements and we do know we have a lot of work to do but thank you for coming here tonight and, and sharing your sharing uh, uh, your praise tonight muchas gracias la, la, last but not least um, uh, I just want to say I'm not gonna be here the next board meeting I'm going on vacation um, I forgot to look up that we were gonna have a school board meeting during spring break. Um, so my vacation was planned during spring break. Unfortunately, we have a board meeting during spring break, which will be the 25th. For, um, for those who don't know, we'll be taking, students will be on spring break from the 17th to the 28th, the 16th to the 20, from the 16th, Th through the 27th yes. and um, and we have a board meeting on the 25th so for those employees who wanted to go on vacation for the full two weeks I'm sorry to report you're gonna have to come to a school board meeting on, on the 25th but we it's too late to do anything about it this time um, but uh, we can look at next year I believe it was it was brought to our attention that next school year we have a board meeting in the middle of spring break next year we have one week of spring break instead of two and there's a board meeting in the middle of that spring break we should really consider even d either doing a back-to-back -back or changing that board meeting in the middle of that spring break in case staff members anybody wants to take a vacation you know uh, for that so let's bring that back um, uh, and with that Thank you, and have a happy spring break. Muchas gracias. Move to adjourn. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye.